I'm Ash Kulkarni. I'm with Informatica. And uh, it's interesting that, Gil, just uh, your last question you fielded was about uh, how do you get data in and how do you do some transformations of data. So it was a perfect segue. Great, great question. You can, you can, you can come by for your tchotchke later. Uh, no, but um, the, the reality of the situation is that we, uh, we have been following this space. Informatica has been in this space of ETL for about 20 years. This is actually our 20th anniversary. So we are by no means one of the, the new cool startups uh, we were at one point of time. I've been with the company for a very long time now. But what's interesting is when Hadoop came along, it was a very interesting opportunity for us. We really, oh, this is a bad idea, we really thought carefully about what does this mean to our space? And traditionally, Informatica had existed in an environment where we had our own data processing capabilities. When you talk about moving data in, transforming that data, putting it in the right kind of format into uh, your target databases for your reporting schemas and so on. You know, there was that traditional world of BI, right? And everybody had their roles and responsibilities well understood. There were the database guys, there were the ETL guys, there were the BI guys. And then here comes along Hadoop. And all of a sudden, everybody is like, wait a minute, it's free form. You know, it's like free form. You can do whatever you want. Nobody knows who's responsible for analytics. Nobody knows who's responsible for transforming the data. Everything is up in the air. And we thought that it was one of the most fascinating technologies that had come around. Because we had been used to working in an environment where people did processing in our engine on a single server in a scale-out grid environment. We had our own grid capabilities. We still do. We had been very familiar with folks making massive investments in Teradata, loading all the data into Teradata, and then using ELT. Um, so just do all the transformations in Teradata after you load it in there. And we had a lot of customers doing that. And so we looked at all of this, and we saw Hadoop, and we said, you know what? The paradigm remains the same. You want to enable people to work in a familiar environment, take care of the data pipeline in our environment, and then take advantage of whatever processing capacity and capability they have in the most optimized manner. So to us, Hadoop was the perfect technology to sit on top of and take, allow our users to take full advantage of Hadoop. It's you know, scalability, the way it can manage distribution of data, the way you can do computation on Hadoop. So we started taking this model of delegating some of that capability to Hadoop, but yet providing the same value that we've always provided in the traditional world. So I wanted to start with this picture because uh, uh, just an interesting comment on, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to pick on uh, Cuba. I mean, it's a pretty fascinating technology. And I, I know Ashish and uh, some of your other uh, your founders and so on. But uh, it's, it's interesting that when Gil put up his slide, you know, all the, the sources that he had out there were what I would describe as the sources where you're only now about to start putting your data, right? You talk about Redshift, they're, they're doing great. They're getting a lot of traction, but most of the data that's showing up in Redshift is data that people are effectively trying to park somewhere because they don't want to spend any more money on Teradata. But you know, data has been created over the last many decades, generations, if you will. We've been storing it in different platforms. We've been creating it in different applications. And the real value of data is cumulative. That's my argument, that the real value of data comes from what I would describe as cumulative analysis. You take the data, you talk to any bank, most banks in North America today, they still run their core banking applications on mainframe. Mainframes aren't going away as much as any of us would want to say goodbye to that technology set. They aren't going away. You have your customer information in open systems. If you want to correlate that with any social information about your customers, that's not in either the mainframe or their open systems. It's probably in some social network, some other wall garden. You're trying to bring in data from all of these different sets that have been created over multiple generations in time. And really, if you can't do that very well, then you you can't get the, the most value out of what you're trying to do in terms of your analysis. So to us, that's, that's very important. We feel that it's important to enable all of that. And I know that as Hadoop evolves, there is going to be more and more in terms of connectivity and other support for ingesting all of these other sources of data. And Informatica started, got, you know, started on that path very early. So um, why is Informatica relevant in this space? I was reading an article 
in uh, Information Week by a gentleman, and I hope to get his name right now, Catlin Siobano. I believe that's how he pronounces his name. It was a very interesting article on uh, the, the elusive data scientist. And he's a person who works for Carlson Wagonlit, the travel company. It's a very big travel company. They do a lot of corporate travel. And uh, he used to be at Fermi Labs before that. So he's a data guy, math guy. And he said that 70%, in that article, he said 70% of the value he adds at Carson Wagonlit is in accessing the data. 20% is in doing the analysis, and then 10% is in just knowing the tools. And you keep hearing that over and over again, that although it's, it's not the stuff that your end business cares about, your business user, but if you want to do that risk analysis by customer, by segment, at the, the most fine-grained level, you need to bring in all the right data from all the relevant sources. You need to normalize it. You need to make sure that it's clean. You need to then make it in a presentable form for whatever analytic engine you're running on top of that data before you can deliver the value to your customers, to your internal users. And that's, that's the challenge. 80% of the work in every single account that we are engaged in and we partner with you know, the cloud areas of the world, the Mappers, the Hortonworks, the Teradata Asters, every, every single Hadoop vendor that you can imagine with Pivotal. And in all of these projects, three-fourths of the work ends up being just bringing in the data, normalizing it, cleaning it, making it ready for analysis. And that's the hard part. Nobody likes to talk about it because it's not what your, what your business user is going to get excited about. But if you don't do that, then chances are any, any results that you show from an analysis are likely to be inherently flawed. And that's the problem. So we really think about it in terms of a, a data pipeline, a supply chain. You have to think about how you're adding value at every step of the supply chain. And to us, it starts from ingesting all the right relevant sources of data. And I'll talk about what we have done in this area, but I think just philosophically, when you look at data integration, the traditional practice of data integration and data management, it's existed for the last 40, 50 years for a very good reason. If you don't follow those right practices of ensuring that you bring in all of your data correctly, that you ensure that the data is normalized, that you ensure that you profile the data to make sure that you understand inherent relationships between, between that data, to make sure that you track the lineage of your data, you end up with results that really aren't scientific. We talk about data science. How is it scientific? How is it science if you can't have repeatable processes that result in deterministic results? A lot of what we do on Hadoop today ends up being exploratory. You are bringing the data sets in. You are trying to run some you know, R analysis maybe on, on certain dimensions. Well, what happens after that? What happens after you've figured out that you've got the right model and you want to operationalize it. Do you have a method to make sure that everything that you've done can be tracked correctly, can be replicated over and over again, and can be turned into a production form that adds real value to your business? There's the exploration, but then there's the operational part of things. And lineage is extremely important. One of the biggest banks on the planet um, who is, uh, is using Hadoop significantly They've got three distinct clusters. They work with us quite, you know, quite a bit. The, the chief data officer of that bank, his statement to me was, on average, he's got about eight copies. Now, he's not talking about the HDFS replication of data. He was saying that he has got about eight copies of every data set that lands up in Hadoop because people just treat it as a file store, as a file system. I want my own local copy. It's a distributed file system. Why do you want to have a local copy? It doesn't make any sense. But I want to have a local copy. So people just keep creating copies and copies and copies. And then you run with this problem of how do you know whether that data set is right or wrong? How do you track that lineage? How do you ensure that that data wasn't transformed in some way that's making it irrelevant for whatever analysis you're doing? So we feel that that, that whole process and mechanism is really important. So what do we do? Um, how many of you are familiar with Informatica? Just show of hands. For the rest of you who aren't familiar with Informatica, we've been in the business of data integration. Uh, we started as an ETL company, so extract, transform, load, pretty much in the data warehousing, BI side, BI space of things. But over the years, we've built out a complete uh, 
portfolio of data management capabilities, if you will. Um, so everything from data ingestion, data profiling, data cleansing, data masking and obfuscation, encryption, everything that you might want to do to ensure that you've got the right best practices around your data. So at the end of it, you can get the value that your business wants. And what we did as part of our overall offering for Hadoop, we figured out how to take the kernel of our engine and run it on every node in the Hadoop cluster. And we take your entire data pipeline. So you can define an entire data pipeline that says, my data is, is coming from MongoDB and Teradata and a few other sources. I'm going to bring it into Hadoop. I'm going to transform it in a certain way. I'm going to join you know, multiple different tables. I'm going to then cleanse certain aspects of that data. I'm going to create some aggregates. I'm going to load the aggregates into Teradata for interactive query processing. I can define that end-to-end -end pipeline within the Informatica platform, and then we can push it down and run it on Hadoop. Now, the way we run it on Hadoop is actually pretty unique in the sense that we don't just do a, a code generation. We do a code generation, but then we also insert UDFs. Hadoop has a streaming API, so you can insert in UDFs into your Hive code. That gets generated into MapReduce with UDFs. And the UDFs are callouts to our libraries. We run our libraries on every node in the Hadoop cluster. Now, why would you want to do that? We've got algorithms for identity resolution, for masking, for deduplication, for compression that have been built over several decades. They've, they're highly optimized. You would not want to redo those in, in Java yourself. They're never going to perform as well. So you really get the best of both worlds. And if you look at how um, with Hadoop 2, the whole yarn model is progressing, it's pretty much that same idea, that MapReduce isn't always the right answer. You might want to bring your own engine, leverage HDFS, the distribution, the data distribution capability of HDFS, and the resource manager, the scheduler, and bring your own programming paradigm. So we've, we've already been on that path. And because of that, you can take pretty much everything that you would want to do in terms of data integration, and now bring it on the Hadoop world, which is extraordinarily powerful for those who understand the real value in Hadoop in terms of being a, an amazing scale-out technology. You can now, you don't have to give up all the right best practices that you've learned over the years just because you want to take advantage of Hadoop. You can get the best of both worlds. And our value proposition simply is every Informatica developer is now a Hadoop developer. It's as simple as that. And in, in the valley, that does not matter. You go to any other part of the world, it matters. It's, it's uh, you know, we, we live in, a, in an amazing bubble. The number of truly amazing developers, you know, I'm sure many of us in the room have been developers or are still developers, um, is just fabulous. But we have customers in Minnesota. We have customers in you know, all parts of the world try finding a good MapReduce developer who can decompose a problem into paralyzable parts and say, here's how I'm going to write this code. Good luck. I mean, you can't even, it's not even a money problem. You can't even find them. You'll have to ship them from somewhere. Right? So our value proposition is simple. Every Informatica developer is now a Hadoop developer. You do all your, your development in the Informatica platform, we take care of the actual execution of it. And today, it's Hive and Pig, and, and now with what Hortonworks is doing with Stinger. How many of you are following the Stinger initiative? So what they're trying to do with Stinger, there's Impala, there's Jacko, there's Hawk. There's so many of these different things evolving. Really, if you depend on your developer community to try and keep on top of all of that as an enterprise customer, it's, it's going to be an impossible challenge. So we abstract all of that for you. So anyways, that's, that's uh, Informatica and Hadoop. And uh, the only message I'll leave you with is, you know, it isn't either or. It should not be an either or. Just because you want to take advantage of Hadoop, you should not have to let go of all the best practices we have learned over the last 40 years. You want to apply them in a different way, but you still want to take advantage of those. And that's what Informatica does, and that's what you're going to see. There are a bunch of sessions happening today and tomorrow 
Uh, some of my colleagues are, uh, are here presenting. There's a keynote at one. And if you're more interested in what we do, how we do it, the technology that we've been devol you know, uh, evolving, the innovations that uh, are coming from Informatica, please, I'd urge you to go and take a look. Thank you very much.